Origin believes the power of netball can be a force for good change. And thanks to Origin, Stacey Marinkovic is teaching us the importance of leadership on and off the court. Leadership is a really strong quality that you gain as you come together in a team. I learnt how to take initiative and work together as a team. Everyone's a leader in their own way. If you can have team resilience and team leadership, you're going to be able to perform at your very best in the most pressured situations. Origin and Netball Australia, where all good change starts. Good evening everybody and welcome to the 2021 Netball Victoria Community Awards announcement, albeit virtually. It's great to have you with us. My name's Pete Laser. a pleasure to be your host for this evening. Before we commence with our announcements and our awards for tonight, may we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet or from wherever you may be watching this evening and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. We also wish to recognise the tremendous contribution that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people make to sport and netball in particular in Victoria, as well as highlight the power of netball to promote reconciliation, enhance belonging and reduce inequality. Tonight, we're here to announce the winners of our community awards. The awards are here to recognise and promote the fantastic work that's been done out in the community every year by those who contribute so much to the wonderful sport of netball. On behalf of the team at Netball Victoria, thanks to everyone who submitted a nomination this year. Even those that didn't make it through to the finalist stage, your nomination is greatly appreciated. And we love hearing about the continual growth and development of our fantastic sport right across Victoria. Before we get into the awards, it's time to hear from our president of Netball Victoria, Kiralee Zimmerman. Thanks, Pete. Well, who would have thought we would have had another year like 2020, but we did. Our wonderful community bounced back strongly from the challenges of 2020 and we saw 100,000 members registered to play our great game. It goes without saying, there's been another challenging year on and off the court. We've been on, we've been off, we've been on, we've been off, and we've been on again. For everyone involved, it's been wonderful to see the short season netball rebooting this term. We've finally even been able to complete association championships, albeit six months late. The 2021 Netball Victoria Community Awards celebrate everything that is fantastic about our community and our game. We're here to celebrate the individuals and groups that have gone above and beyond this year. In a year when it could have been just as easy not to nominate, it is tremendous to see our community recognising how important these awards are. Thank you for all the nominations that we have received this year in each of the seven categories. A particular thanks goes out to the hardworking committees of our associations, leagues and clubs. Your tireless work throughout the year through various lockdowns and ever-changing COVID protocols has seen our community continue to be engaged. It is your dedication that allows netball to thrive. Congratulations to all the finalists and to the winners who will soon be announced. Thank you to our valued sponsors of each category. Your support is greatly appreciated. We have our fingers crossed for a somewhat normal 2022 with uninterrupted netball at all levels. It will be nice to only have to worry about where's the missing umpire in court too, rather than has everyone checked in. Back to you, Pete. Thanks very much for that, Kiralee. Time now to head into our first award for this evening. All award winners tonight will receive a certificate, trophy and a gift voucher to the value of $500 from one of our valued partners. The first award this evening is the Teacher of the Year Award presented by Deakin. This award acknowledges the valuable contribution that teachers play in the participation of netball across Victoria. And our finalists are Timothy Lumsden, Brunswick North Primary School, Meredith Thornton, Anderson's Creek Primary School, and Blair Jones Pike, Botanic Ridge Primary School. And the winner of the 2021 Teacher of the Year Award is Timothy Lumsden from Brunswick North Primary School. Timothy's good enough to join us. Tim, I know you're very busy as all teachers are, but congratulations, <laughs> Teacher of the Year. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, big surprise, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> but you put a lot of time and effort in. I mean, my mum was a primary school teacher. I know how much work you put in and to add on top of what you're already doing and after the last 12, 18 months, it's a lot of work. To add on top of that, that you're getting involved in the school's program as well. Must be a real thrill to be recognised tonight. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And the effort of uh, you know Netball uh, Victoria is um, yeah is amazing. It may, you know it's a great organisation to work with, and um, 
yeah, most importantly, the kids love it. Absolutely. Gets them involved in the sport and hopefully they stay involved in the sport for a long period of time. Mentioned in your application or your nomination that you're a teacher ambassador and the school participated in the sporting schools program. Can you tell us a little bit about how netball is involved in the school program? Yeah, uh, like uh, we apply every term for a sporting schools grant and uh, we were successful uh, in term three and uh, we decided we'd use it for netball. And, uh, yeah, I, I decided to do the uh, online training course as well um, to run a teacher-led program. Um, it's the second time we've selected netball. The first time was a couple of years ago and, and we got, uh, I think it was Shelley O'Donnell to come out to the school and uh, ex-Australian player. And, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic uh, experience for the kids, but also for myself, you know, watching her go about uh, how she went about presenting lessons and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was great. What do you love about the sport? I mean, obviously you've got a passion for, for teaching. That's why you're involved in and doing what you do. But what do you love about netball and how it brings kids out and just gets them involved in sport? I think obviously it's a team sport. It's one aspect of it, um, you know, and, and the physical aspect of it as well. Um, and where we are, there's a, a big local net, netball club uh, just down the road. So, uh, you know, it's just building on those things. We always talk about pathways that start at the schools and go all the way through to the Elite level. Have we got any future vixens or future diamonds that are running around under your <laughs> early tutelage? <laughs> I don't know about that, Pete, but uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. No doubt. I know this is an individual award, but no doubt there's some people that you'd like to thank because there's a lot of people who, who are involved in programs such as this, but no doubt there's people you'd like to thank tonight. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, the Sporting Schools Organisation for giving, giving schools the opportunity uh, and obviously Netball Victoria, you know, working with them. Been, uh, been excellent to, to work with. Thanks, Tim, and congratulations once again. Our next award for this evening is the Inclusive Netball Community Award presented by RACV. This award recognises the outstanding work in engaging and supporting non-traditional participants to achieve growth and development within netball through diverse communities. The finalists for the Inclusive Netball Community Award are Angels Healthy Lifestyles, and Melbourne University Lightning Netball Club. The winner of the Inclusive Netball Community Award is Melbourne University Lightning Netball Club. Congratulations to Melbourne Uni Lightning Netball Club, and we're joined by the Queen of Netball herself, President Lindy Murphy. Lindy, congratulations. Thank you, Pete. Uh, this is just wonderful acknowledgement for the work our club's doing in collaboration with our partner, the University of Melbourne, to create an awareness of the LGBTIQ community's participation in sport and, and to ensure that we provide a safe and inclusive environment for this community. We've known each other for a long time. We've always said how the best netball and the most en enjoyable netball is when everyone gets to enjoy it, everyone feels safe and happy and competitive, no doubt, but still just with a smile on their face. And, and it seems to be that that's at the, the paramount to everything that you're doing at the Lightning. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's really important that our clubs do create a safe space for people to be involved and to participate. Um, you know, we, we need to make sure that we have great policies and procedures and an education framework in place to ensure that we can continue this great work that we're doing. Um, a pride round, whilst it gives our sport an opportunity to declare our support and acceptance of the LGBTIQ community and uh, to celebrate the diversity of that community through sport, it's, it's not enough. It's a great event, it's a great celebration but that support needs to transcend beyond an annual pride round. And as a sport, we need to work very hard to, towards achieving this all year round. Speaking of which, aside from the pride, what are some of the other initiatives that, that your club has, has brought to the table to make sure that everyone feels safe and included? Well, we've, in the last uh, two years, we've run a community program in the city of Yarra with Indigenous and African-Australian um, teenage females um, to encourage them to participate in netball. There's also been a tertiary education awareness link to that program. So the young, the young girls are not only um, 
in increasing their community involvement and meeting and making new friends through netball, we're also providing them with an opportunity to come into the university, have a look at uh, what's available to them as young women in that education space and the connection between education and elite sport. I only semi-jokingly said and referred to you as the Queen of Netball at the start because it is true, you've held a lot of roles, responsibilities and titles within Netball, Commonwealth Games, World Cups, yet as president and winning this award, the Inclusive Netball Community Award, you seem to be just as proud of, as any of those achievements because it is a, a whole club award and it is making netball more accessible and more inclusive for everyone. Oh, absolutely, Pete. Um, we, we're blessed with the people that we have in our club. Um, they have been on board with this initiative and, and other community initiatives from the get-go. Uh, there's never been a doubt in anybody's mind that this was the right thing to do. Um, you know, the LGBTIQ community, it's a human right to be involved in our space, in our in our sport, and to be able to be involved in that space um, so that they can perform to the very best of their ability whilst being themselves and not having to pretend to be somebody else. And that's what we want for everybody, to be able to be their best while they're being genuine and true to themselves. And that's why it's our sport. And I know... As president, you've been nominated to come on and chat on behalf of your club, but no doubt there's some people that you would like to thank. I would. I would. I would like to thank um, Bridget Juno and Rod Warnicke at the University of Melbourne who have been incredibly supportive of our club. Uh, they've assisted us in uh, raising additional funds so that we can deliver community programs such as the one we're doing, we've been working on in Richmond, we had great sponsorship support from the Bendigo Bank and the City of Yarra to help us deliver that program. We've had uh, funding support to be able to produce uh, our Pride uniform. This year we wore a Pride dress for the first time. And next year, the, the next step in our inclusiveness program is to work on our commitment to our Indigenous community. And we're now in uh, uh, taking the next steps to produce an Indigenous uniform that we will wear as our clash dress when we play teams that are of a similar colour to ours so that we get to promote our commitment and acknowledge the uh, contribution of the Indigenous community to the sport of netball too. No one's been involved in netball longer, certainly, that I know of and is more proud of this moment as well. So congratulations, Lindy. Well done to you, but more importantly, well done to the Melbourne University Lightning Netball Club. Fantastic to win this award. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Pete. Congratulations, Lindy, and Melbourne University Lightning Netball Club, deserving winners. Next up, we have the Net Set Go Centre of the Year Award. This award recognises those clubs, associations and leagues that have made a significant contribution to the growth and development of junior netball within the community through the establishment of an accredited Net Set Go Centre. Our finalists are Casey Netball Association, Lara Netball Club, Diamond Creek Force Netball Association, and Albury Netball Association. And the winner of the Net Set Go Centre of the Year Award goes to Lara Netball Club. Congratulations, Lara Netball Club, and I believe we've got the Secretary of Lara Netball Club, Bridie Brady, on the line. Bridie, congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. You are the Net Set Go Centre of the Year. How does that feel knowing how many Net Set Go Centres are out there and just the fantastic work that's going on in the community around Victoria? Your club has won it. How does that feel? Oh, it's amazing. We've put a lot of hard work into it and we've really tried to develop and grow our centre and we've done that over the last few terms and we're just really proud of everyone that's put in and also all the kids. So thank you very much. Well, speaking of the development, I believe that you've introduced a number of new initiatives to the Net Set Go program to increase participation in the program. Can you tell us a little bit about those initiatives? Yeah, we've done some come and try days. We've had also some of our juniors, um, older juniors, come down and work with our Net Set Go kids because they love to hang around um, the older kids. We also did, um, during lockdown, we sent a little handwritten letter to them in the mail 
um, with just a little gift voucher to let them know we're thinking of them and just tried to be really inclusive and just tried to drive that participation up. So, yeah. I was going to ask about the COVID lockdowns. I mean, everyone's suffered through it. It's been hard. A little handwritten letter. How long did that take to do? Who got involved in that? Um, so it was just a little, we've got a great sponsor in Grilled. So we had vouchers to give to the kids. So what we did was we just thought we'd send them a note in the mail because it's hard to connect with them on social media and other ways. So we just thought that that was something to let them know we were thinking of them during the term three. Um, and yeah, they, they really loved it. And it was just nice to see them. Yeah, so enthusiastic and just get ready to get back into netball again. So That's sensational. I also believe you provided a few VIP experiences for your Net Set Go participants as well, just with other areas of the club. Tell us through that. Yeah, so we did um, our 11 and under and some of our older Net Set Goes. So we had them come down and be the special guests of our A and B grade squad. So we had some workbooks that they went through and they completed the workbooks. So Netball Bingo, they were the special guests um, they did halftime um, drills and skills, and then they came back and presented the awards at afternoon tea to the, all our senior players for that day. So, I reckon the seniors would love that as well. What a fantastic initiative that is. I know that you're speaking on behalf of Lara Netball Club, but no doubt there's some other people that you'd like to, to thank and recognise as well. Yeah, so I'd thank, like to thank um, all our committee who are always really supportive um, to Alicia, who's run every single Net Set Go session with me this year. Um, so thank you to her and all our parents that have stepped up and helped um, to help with our sessions. As our numbers grow, we've needed more parents to jump in and help out. So that's been great. Um, and thank you to our kids, lastly, because they just bring so much enthusiasm to every single session, always there with a big smile, um, ready to have a go at anything. So they're the best. Thank you. Thanks, Bridie. Congratulations to you and congratulations to the whole of Lara Netball Club. Before we move on with our final awards for this evening, we recognise a new Hall of Fame inductee, a member of our netball community and a representative on the biggest stage, Netball Victoria, are honoured to welcome Wilma Shakespeare. The Hall of Fame offers a platform for individuals to be recognised for their service to the sport of netball and continual support of the game, two key attributes that Wilma personifies. Casting an eye over Wilma's netball life, it's fair to say that the defender had a decorated career and embodies what it means to be a vixen through her fearless leadership. Wilma represented Victoria from 1960 to 1962, then again in 64 to 65, before going on to represent Australia from 1961 to 1965. She played seven caps for the green and gold, offering a strong defensive presence inside the circle. Throughout that time, Wilma rose through the ranks named vice-captain of both the Australian and Victorian teams. Wilma was also a member of the history-making Australian side, claiming gold at the first world tournament in 1963, now known as the Netball World Cup. It was an historic win for the goalkeeper, with Australia managing to scrape past New Zealand by a solitary goal. Not only was Wilma a formidable figure on the court, but so too off it, stepping up as the Australian head coach in 1969. Under her reign, Wilma led Australia to two victorious world tournaments in 1971 and 1979 across the globe. The accolades did not stop there. She was the inaugural netball head coach at the AIS and the acting director for a short period of time, before taking on the position of director of Queensland Academy of Sport. Having accomplished so much in Australia, she spread her wings and became the National Director of the English Institute of Sport. Her awards include Netball Australia Service Award, Australian Institute of Sport Order of Merit. For her contribution and service to netball and sport, she was awarded the Member of the Order of Australia Medal, Netball Victoria Team of the Century, Netball Victoria Legend of the Game, Netball Australia inducted into the Hall of Fame General Division, and now, Netball Victoria Hall of Fame. Once again, we say congratulations to Wilma Shakespeare and all that she's achieved and done for the netball community around the world. We're also inducting another special member of the Netball Victoria community tonight as a life member of Netball Victoria. Netball Victoria life membership is awarded to a member in recognition of that member's outstanding service to netball in Victoria. And tonight's inductee is one of my favorites. Congratulations, Jenny Dole.
We are honoured to recognise the outstanding commitment and loyalty of Jenny Dole, who is our latest Life Member inductee. Jenny has been a familiar face around the State Netball and Hockey Centre, dedicating her life to netball in all of its forms, with over 20 years' service in the Victorian Netball League. Jenny has committed not only time, but so too her energy and love to the Vixens, volunteering for the club for the past 13 years. Although her role has evolved over time, ranging from umpire liaison to customer service, one thing that has never changed is her unwavering love of the sport. A familiar face in the Vixens environment, Jenny is also part of the furniture in the VNL and Victorian Fury space. Jenny started volunteering with the Fury in 2013, taking on multiple roles. Jenny remains an integral figure in the VNL, having started way back in 1999. Her generosity is often at the forefront, providing things out of her own pocket, including some lollies that took out a filling or two of my own, while spending countless hours at the stadium to ensure that everything goes along seamlessly by helping with score sheets and media. Winding the clock back even further, Jenny was an integral member of the Melbourne Kestrels, sitting on their committee. She was also the state team manager for Victoria from 1999 through 2008, which encompassed a range of different responsibilities, including assisting the coach courtside. There's not a moment that Jenny isn't immersed in netball, also doubling as a volunteer for Netball Australia, where she's umpire liaison for both national and international events. Jenny's been actively involved in this role since 2014, while she's also been a crucial cog in the Netball Victoria competitions and programs, including school championships and clinics. Jenny constantly goes above and beyond for the netball community, and we are grateful for her continued service. Congratulations on Netball Victoria Life Membership, Jenny Dole. We'll now take a short break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes with the final awards. Meet Colin Jenkins, netball coach, orange cutter, artistic director, planner, chauffeur, sherpa, and sideline hero. Pass the ball. As proud partners of Netball Australia, we want to thank Colin for going above and beyond each week to support the netball community. HCF and Netball Australia, united by uncommon care. Welcome back. Our next award for the evening is the WorkSafe Safety Initiative Award. This award recognises good safety practices that have been implemented to leagues and clubs throughout the WorkSafe Country Netball League. We now have a message from Executive Director, External Affairs of WorkSafe Victoria, Sam Jenkin. Hi everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to introduce Netball Victoria's WorkSafe Awards. This is WorkSafe's 17 years supporting netball in Victoria. It is a partnership we are incredibly passionate about because we understand how important country clubs are to the health, safety and well-being of regional and rural communities. The partnership provides community support through our WorkSafe Mental Health Workshops and Club Safety Fund. There are two awards that are proudly brought to you by WorkSafe. The first is the Club Safety Initiative Award. This award is presented to the club that in 2021 has embodied the values of WorkSafe through their exceptional safety practices and commitment to providing a safe environment for all. Congratulations to everyone who was nominated for these awards. Over to Pete to announce the winners. Thank you, Sam. And our finalists for the WorkSafe Safety Initiative Award are Carnham Linton Netball Club, Lucknow Netball Club, and Natamook United Netball Club. And the winner, of the WorkSafe Safety Initiative Award is a tie, Carnham Linton Netball Club and Lucknow Netball Club. Congratulations, both clubs will be walking away with a gift voucher of $2,000 each, thanks to WorkSafe to assist with the upgrade of their facility. Firstly, we're joined by Ali Clack from Carnham Linton Netball Club. Ali, congratulations. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Great job. <laughs> Two grand, not bad. New facilities to cater for players, scorers and spectators. What difference has this made to the club? Yes. Um, so obviously Carnham, Linton, it's two grounds. And we had our new family-friendly um, facility at Carnham. And just to do the clean-up for the, the old courts, 
which we did through halfway through the season, was um, really beneficial. So it'll just complement our, our new facilities, really. And, yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. $2,000 prize with thanks to our friends at WorkSafe. No doubt there's some safety practices that you plan on implementing also next year just to keep that upgrade going and making sure that it's a, a safe and a, and a fun family environment. Yes. So really, we would just continue with what I put in my application. Um, you know, always uh, keeping the new balls um, for each grade. Obviously, the squeegees that we have to use on our courts and that to keep them safe if it's a, a rainy day. And the other thing to complement our uh, rooms was a new training um, table for the girls to actually be able to go in there because our old facilities were just like um, an old tin shed, to be honest, and we'd have to go into the football um, training rooms for the girls to go and get taped and everything. So, yeah, just fantastic. It helps to retain players. It helps get new players as well, no doubt. Uh, no doubt there's some people you'd like to thank. I know you don't do it alone, but there's no doubt some people you'd like to thank. Yeah, like so I'd like to um, thank WorkSafe and Netball Victoria for making these awards possible um, because in little clubs like in the country and that, like everything helps. So it's just fantastic. So thank you. Well done, Ali. Well spoken. Congratulations to Carnum Linton Netball Club, one of our winners. Now it's time to move to our second winners, Lucknow Netball Club. To you now, Lisa, from Lucknow, congratulations. What a year it has been. $2,000 from WorkSafe. That will no doubt come in handy. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We'd just like to, to thank um, Netball Victoria and WorkSafe for making it possible. Um, yeah, lots of fantastic ideas at the club of what we're going to do with the money. I'm really excited and we just really want to thank the team of members and volunteers behind the scenes that, that make everything possible at the club. I do believe over the last 12 months there's been a number of initiatives that you've brought forward. No doubt $2,000 will help with those, but talk us through some of those initiatives that you brought to Lucknow Netball Club. Yeah, so we um, had our new club rooms opened. Um, we've been looking at putting policies and procedures in place, um, new equipment, first aid equipment, um, sweepers for the courts, making them safe, um, having um, yeah, lots of volunteers, uh, clear signage in the areas, um, personal hygiene products available for our, our netballers. Um, yeah, lots of things have been changing. Just also making sure we were following the, the right COVID procedures. Um, it was a very different season this year. So yeah, lo lots of things have been put in place. It never stops, does it? And I know $2,000 will just go towards some of these initiatives, but having a safe environment, a great environment for players and coaches and volunteers, it just means that people want to stay at the club, get back to the club. It, it just makes it easier, doesn't it, to make sure that you're retaining and, and getting all the best players and families and, and friends to come along. That's right. We've been working on making the club an inclusive environment so that all family members can participate. We've got a lot of junior programs happening. Um, we've also got our senior programs and we just want to encourage everyone to come along, have that lovely family environment and um, stay, stay in the club for, for many, many years. Lisa, I know that you're the sole representative on uh, for this awards night, but you're speaking on behalf of Lucknow Netball Club. No doubt there's some people you'd like to thank. Oh, there, there's many, many people. Um, there's all our, our netball committee, in particular our vice president, our netball vice president, um, Scott Atkinson, and we have um, yeah, a lot of people behind the scenes. I don't want to name too many people in case I miss anyone, but um, we appreciate all the help all our members and volunteers are giving. Thanks very much to Lisa and Ali. Congratulations once again to Carnal Linton Netball Club and Lucknow Netball Club. Our next award is the Umpire of the Year Award presented by WorkSafe. Once again, we welcome Sam Jenkin from WorkSafe. The second award is the Umpire of the Year Award. We all know umpires play a vital role within netball, both on and off the court. The Umpire of the Year Award is awarded to the umpire who, through their passion for the game, has excelled in providing support, development, and growth of umpires within their club, association, or league. Congratulations to everyone who was nominated for these awards. Over to Pete to announce the winners. Thank you, Sam. Our finalists for the Umpire of the Year Award are Anita Hill 
Mornington to Peninsula and Nepean Football Netball League and Nepean Netball Association. And Sophie Cook, Warrigal and District Netball Association. And the winner of our Umpire of the Year Award is Anita Hill from the Mornington Peninsula Nepean Football Netball League and Nepean Netball Association. Congratulations, Anita. We know that there's so many great umpires running around all around Victoria. You have been named Umpire of the Year. What does that mean to you? Oh, it, it, it means a lot. It's it's a real honour just to have been nominated and let alone a finalist and then to win it. It's like really crazy. This year is really special because it's another COVID year, so it's more about what you're doing off the court than what you're actually doing on the court. Yeah, so all I can say is thank you to everyone. <laughs> What does it mean to you to, to not just win this award, but to be involved in making sure that not just the, the number of umpires are increasing, but the, the quality of umpiring is also getting better? What does that mean? Well, that's what we're Peninsula Nepal Umpires Association is all about. Um, we're all about developing and mentoring. It's really, we're trying to create a pool of mentors. So an umpire just doesn't get their badge and then feel there's nowhere to go. That they, they've got a journey. We're building a little community of um, of umpires, so they we work and learn and focus together and support each other. Um, so yeah, the development of umpires for me or for Peninsula uh, Netball Umpires Association, because for me this award is all about them. It's you know I'm just yeah very fortunate that I've, I've been named, but it's it's more about all the hard work that so many people do. All those people there on a Saturday, um, out there, rain, hail or shine, um, just making the sport that we love and are so passionate about keep going and keep growing. But you don't do it for the recognition, of course. You wouldn't put in that many, that many hours to, to do it, but it does mean a lot, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it means the world. Um, yeah, netball is my passion. It's, it's, it's what I do for the love of it, you know, and like just been on holidays, and I've still been having a meeting at least once a week. Um, yeah, you, you, do, you just don't stop and you, you don't want to stop. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a job. It's not a chore. It's a joy. It really is. But it is hard work though. You need to have good relationships with the players on the court and off the court. You need to have associations and, and you've got to get along with the other umpires. And you've got coaches who are yelling at you and people on the, on the sidelines. So that's not easy. <laughs> no, no, no. A, an umpire's job is is so hard and I think it's – one of the other things that we want to try and work towards too is actually getting it taught in schools. So instead of just producing players, let's produce umpires and let them realise how hard and tricky the job is. And then we can have mutual respect. And I don't know what it is about these community awards, but everyone who wins always tries to lavish praise on everyone else. You have won it. You've been named the umpire of the year. And in an in association, I mean, down the peninsula in the Pan Netball League, there's just such a diverse range of, of players and grades and all ages and abilities. I mean, it's a huge netball league that, that are down there. I mean, it must really resonate with you that you've been named the umpire of the year in an association which just covers so many broad attributes of our wonderful sport of netball. It does, it does. But yeah, like everyone, it takes a team to make the dream work. It does, it really does. It takes all of these people, magic, amazing people to, to make it all happen. Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm very, very, very honoured and I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'll tell you what you could say, perhaps is no doubt. I mean, you've, you've tried to lavish praise on everyone else, but no doubt there are some people that you would like to thank or recognise that have helped you to be where you are now and be recognised as our umpire of the year. Oh, well, of course, obviously, obviously the support of my family um, and all the team, as I said, part of PNUA, um, both got years gone by and, and current team, um, they're, all, like, they're all just amazing. Um, the mentors that I've had along the way, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all of them. Congratulations to Anita. Well done, our umpire of the year. Next up, we have the Association of the Year Award, proudly presented by our friends at Flight Centre. This award recognises associations that have demonstrated excellence in governance, administration, development of volunteers, and management of practices that have strengthened and sustained the association. Our finalists are Diamond Creek Force Netball Association, 
Albury Netball Association, Moeyan District Netball Association. And the winner of our Association of the Year is Albury Netball Association. We're now joined by the president of Albury Netball Association, Hilly Westra. Hilly, congratulations. Must be a proud moment being the Association of the Year. Thank you very much. And yeah, it's a very proud moment. We've had a lot of work over the last couple of years and it's been an absolute fantastic reward towards us. It's been great to actually get that far. Thank you. Pretty hard 12 months, pretty hard 24 months, especially I would have thought up near the border with different restrictions, different governments, different things going on. And in the midst of it all, the pandemic, you've got to try and get the association up and running still. Talk us through your last year. How has it been? Well, it's actually, as you're right, it's two years since COVID. It's been a very trying period for us. Um, we've had to deal with both both sides of the border. So we've had New South Wales as well as Victorian rules. Um, some There was times there where Victorian wasn't allowed to come to New South Wales. Um, so that, it sort of held us up a little bit there. During this period of time, we've just tried everything that we could just to keep netball going, including uh, just rock up netball we've run that last year as well as this year just to keep just to keep it going we've had um net set go we've um and again we've tried something different on net set go we tried to do it on a friday night to get it away from all the um uh saturday sports you know like your local football your local uh the big games the netball and all that sort of stuff we've tried to get away from that by doing it on a friday night um yeah and it just um we've run whatever competition we could just over the over the, the last two years during this COVID, just every time we start it and run it and all that sort of stuff. Yes. How proud are you of all the work that the association's, association's done, including the clubs? I mean, it's a mountain of work just to get to where you are and get everyone on court. How proud are you of what has been achieved over the last 12, 18 months? I am very, very proud of our, our club. We've, we've got about 16 of our uh, committee members that are very, very hardworking. Um, all of them have sort of uh, put in to, to keep things going, even the rep teams. Um, nearly everybody is on board every week just to keep things going and make it work. But it's just been a, a fantastic effort by the whole committee. I love your passion, Neil. I want to know what... What keeps, you, what keeps driving you? You're the president of the Association of the Year, which is fantastic. It won't change how much hard work and time you need to put into it, but what are you, what, what's the best part of it for you? What do you get out of being the president of the Albury Netball Association? It's just um, three years ago, we actually got new club rooms, new core, um, and a whole new facility, basically, and it's just so fantastic just to see it things happening there, you know, like it's so sad during COVID that you drive past it and there's just nothing happening just week after week. So um, for us, it, it, the drive is to just see this um, these courts filled with all the netball players. Um, just, you know, that, that's, that's where it's all about is get these netball players on the court. It's a great sport. It takes a lot of people to run it and uh, you're doing it beautifully up there at Albury. No doubt, though, there are some people that you would like to thank on behalf of the association. Well, on behalf of the association, we naturally, Netball Victorian has been a, a great um, supporter for us, um, as well as the, the, the guys out in, in the, uh, the field with Pam and all those ones that do the, um, the supporters. And then our own committee, our um, Vice President Beck, our Secretary and, and Rep Coordinator, Leone, um, our pre um, treasurer Leanne, it's just everybody is just out there um, helping. It, it's the whole committee that it's, you know, it's just everybody all in. I know there'll be plenty of work to do, mate, but hopefully for one moment you can just take a breath and acknowledge the fact that you've been named as our Association of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And yeah, very proud moment for all of us. Thank you. Congratulations once again to Albury Netball Association deserving winners. Next up, we have the Coach of the Year Award presented by Jetport. Coaches play an exceptionally important role within netball, in fact, in all sport, having the ability to develop and nurture the individual athlete both on and off the court. The Coach of the Year Award 
It recognises the outstanding contribution of a dedicated individual coach who has excelled in providing support, development and growth of both coaches and athletes within their club, association and league. The finalists of our Coach of the Year Award are Shayla House, Ovens and Murray League, Wodonga Raiders Football Netball Club. Courtney Simpson, Goulburn Valley League, Shepparton and Swans. Jude Donovan, Rise Netball Club. And Michelle Neal, Northern Pride Netball Association. And the winner of our Coach of the Year Award is Shayla House, Ovens and Murray League, Wodonga Raiders Football Netball Club. Congratulations, Shayla. Coach of the Year Award winner. How does that feel? Thank you. Um, that's really exciting. Not something I was expecting, but very grateful for the award. I like how you've got the Raiders top on as well. Is that just happenstance that you have that on or you decided to make sure that you're representing when you came on this, this evening? No, I chose to wear that. I love this club and I'm proud to uh, represent Raiders. They're a, a wonderful club and they support me in my role as a coach as well. Talk us through the last 12 months, the last couple of years. I mean, being a coach would be really tough because it's not just about making sure you're running training or turning up on a Saturday or Sunday. I mean, there's player management and there's the relationships that you have with the players. Just talk us through the last year or two. Yeah, it's certainly been a roller coaster the last couple of years with COVID. Um, I know for me personally, I coach a junior side and for me, the mental health of these kids has been the most important thing to manage over the last two years. So we've been doing weekly check-ins via Zoom and doing little sessions to keep everyone active because we know that's good for our headspace. So it's been tough, but I've been privileged to have a group of girls that have wanted to stay connected and everyone's been um, on board, which has been really great. You're up in the Ovens and Murray League and, of course, being with Wodonga Rays. I mean, that would have been tough with state restrictions being different as well and just being on the border. That would have been all over the place. How did you deal with, with those sort of challenges as well? It's just a, another element that you need to, to think about. Yeah, it was really tough. It um, unfortunately ended our season this year. The girls were fi um, finishing as minor premiers and that did end the season, the whole border restrictions. And I know last year it meant that half of them lived in New South Wales and the other half lived in Victoria. So we could do training sessions sometimes and not with everyone. So it was it was confusing. It all feels a little bit surreal still, but we got here in the end. <laughs> so you've been named as the coach of the year, which is a fantastic achievement. Talk me through your coaching pathway. Where did you, where did you come? Where did the passion for coaching come from? Um, I think I've always loved it since I was a junior. Um, I started, I played in the Auburn Netball Association growing up and have played in lots of different junior competitions. And I had great mentors. Um, my mum is one of them. She has been a coach for as long as I can remember. And I think seeing her doing all that stuff at home kind of sparks the passion and the inspiration to be involved. Yeah, it's been really good. You mentioned that you're a player now, of course, a coach and a successful coach, which is why we're chatting this evening. What do you love most about coaching? Um, I think the thing I love the absolute most is seeing the players that I coach develop as people. And I know as you see a season go on, they you see people come out of their shells, they find their confidence and they... Yeah, when they start to believe in themselves and they when they become proud of themselves is something that I really love watching. It's not these kinds of things, which I'm very grateful for. It's the, it's the little things along the way, the little milestones that you see players tick off for themselves and how proud of themselves they are. Well, this is just a little bit of recognition for all the hard work you do put in. I know it's an individual award, but no doubt there's some people that you would like to thank. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like to thank Leonie, who's our netball president, also who I believe nominated for me this award. She's a um, great person that supports me all, all the time. Um, my mum, who is a mentor and always has been, and obviously my family, I'm super grateful. And the Netball Club at Raiders is an amazing place to be a part of, so I'm super grateful for all of them. Congratulations, Shayla, our Coach of the Year. Now to our final award of the evening, and it's the big one, the Volunteer of the Year Award, proudly presented by Origin. This award recognises the outstanding services to netball in the areas of administration, officiating and volunteering at club, association or league level. It provides tangible recognition for the efforts of individuals in improving and developing netball. Sport, and netball in particular, would not be the same without the assistance of our fantastic volunteers. The finalists for the Volunteer of the Year Award are Narelle Draper, Hazel Glen Netball Club. Holly Booth, 
Casey Netball Association. Mark Goldspink, Diamond Creek Force Netball Association. And Tamara Kennedy, Moeean District Netball Association. And the winner of the 2021 Volunteer of the Year Award is Tamara Kennedy, Moey and District Netball Association. Tamara is good enough to join us. Well done, Tamara. Congratulations on winning this award. You've been involved in Moey and District Netball Association for over 10 years. How does it feel to win the Volunteer of the Year this year? Um, it feels wonderful. It feels fantastic. <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> You know how many volunteers are. You know that volunteers are the lifeblood of our sport and yet you have won the Volunteer of the Year in all of the community netball that goes around in Victoria. I mean, that's an amazing achievement. How does it feel to be recognised in this way? It feels wonderful, but these things don't happen by yourself. There's lots of other volunteers at our association that make a huge difference and I'd like to at this stage recognise those ones, especially Donna, our club secretary, and Kerry our umpire coordinator who makes such a difference and make my life a little bit easily, easier. <laughs> but it feels wonderful. It feels great. It feels like all that hard work, someone's acknowledged what, I, what we've done over the last couple of years. Um, it's amazing. I don't know why it is every year that our Volunteer of the Year always tries to deflect all of the praise and adulation to everyone else who's in the association. You have done it tomorrow. This is the one time that the spotlight is allowed to shine very brightly on you for all the work that you've done. What have you been, what have you done over the last 12 months within the association? It's been a big 12 months, we know that. Tell us through, talk us through some of the things that you've done over the last year. Um, we have played netball every opportunity we have had been allowed to play netball. So the day that we've been allowed to play netball, we've been back on the court playing netball. We've been doing draws as we go. We've been making allowances. We, I think. <laughs> we've been making allowances for people with COVID. We've been mixing it up. We've, everything has just been flexible. We've just been flexible, completely flexible to make things happen for everyone. Council have been great. We've, I've been communicating with council. I've been communicating communicating with Netball Victoria. We've got some new facilities. So we've been really, really lucky to have such a wonderful facility that's allowed us to play netball. So it's been a it's been a hard 12 months, but it's been a really wonderful 12 months for our association as well because we have really, really become that community association. Everyone's come back to us. We've had people that have never played netball come in and play netball. It, for all the hard work, it has been the most rewarding season I think I've ever participated in. It's fantastic to hear. I was going to ask about the 10 new courts in the pavilion. I mean, that makes a, a huge difference to have those facilities at your disposal. No wonder everyone's coming back to play. Yes. It only took us, my son's now, he turned 11 last week and I started back then talking to council to build those facilities. <laughs> So we measure it by my little boy and how big he gets. Who's not so little anymore. <laughs> no, he's not. And he's playing on them, which is really, really exciting. So all four of my kids have played on them yet this year, the two girls and the two boys. And it's been wonderful to have something that is just fit for purpose and magnificent. And it has just attracted our, our numbers have increased so much by having a facility that is that good. So... And we didn't do it alone. We had a lot of help from Netball Victoria too. <laughs> oh, there's always a lot of hands who are helping there and supporting. I, I do believe you're also really proactive in the, the COVID safe and COVID practices, making sure that everything was in line. So when you did get the green light and you could go out and play, that you're ready to go. I mean, that's a, that's a, huge, that's a mountain of work, a huge effort. Uh, how important was that to make sure that everything was being done the right way to make sure that you were ready to go? Um, that was a lot of work and writing COVID safe plans are just so much fun and really, really enjoyable, not something I want to do again and again. Um, and I'm so glad that we wrote those COVID safe plans and we were really, really strict on those COVID safe plans. And we have been really, really strict this whole, um, this whole time and still are, you know, and, and very clear on our expectations and the expectations of our community on what we expect on, on the level of commitment we want. 
And we've done that and we've had very few problems with it. Um, you know, now we just get on with it. Everyone knows what to do. Everyone's having a good time. It's fantastic. But, yeah, there was a lot of work around COVID, a lot of reading and a lot of writing. And, um, yeah, you know, my I, I really should thank my husband, actually. <laughs> He's put up. I was going to say to you, you mentioned a couple of names earlier on, but no doubt there's some people you'd like to thank. I know that I mentioned slightly tongue-in-cheek that the Volunteer of the Year never actually likes the praise or takes it for themselves. But congratulations to you, but no doubt there's some people that you'd like to recognise and thank. Yeah, I think I need to thank Donna, our club secretary, um, also a really, really good friend. And um, we nearly lost her at the start of this year. And to have her back is just fantastic. She means the world to our club and um, she's amazing. And she keeps me in line and won't let me spend as much money as I like to. <laughs> um, Kerry, our umpire coordinator, who's an amazing umpire coordinator, who's been doing it now for over 20 years loves it and um, has made a huge difference in so many people's lives. I need to thank my family, especially my husband, who has um, been very supportive over the years and is really happy that I've done this. Um, my kids, my oldest just finished year 12 and she was the reason we started that netball and now she's um, finished. So... She's made it through the year, which has been great. And my other daughter and our two boys, all of who still play netball at Moeen District. Um, our general committees over the years, there's been some fantastic people. I need to thank Judy Bahaja, who has been a wonderful mentor and is always accessible and always gives excellent advice. And Leanne Bland, who's now come on, she's fantastic as well. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tamara. Congratulations once again. That brings to a close all of our awards tonight. A huge congratulations to all of our winners. Also I'd like to thank all of our finalists and of course those that took the time to submit a nomination and may not have regressed through to the final stages. Your contribution to netball in whatever form it takes is greatly appreciated. Your continued dedication is also worth recognising and we hope to hear even more positive stories as we go through to 2022. I encourage you all to keep up the work again next year as Netball gets back up and running and we submit a nomination form once again for these awards. Thank you all for watching. All the best for the remainder of 2021. And of course, as we head into 2022, thanks for watching this evening and good evening. With doubt and dismay you are smitten. You think there's no chance for you none. Why the best books haven't been written, the best race hasn't been run, the best tune hasn't been played yet. Cheer up for the world is young, but the best jobs haven't been started, the best work hasn't been done.